Uh, this is a poorly edited trailer. I'm going to be completely straight up with you. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just Webster's We're Talking About Transformers last night. This is episode number 134, and in this episode, I'm going to give you my shot-for-shot -shot review for Transformers Last Night trailer number two, which is essentially an extended version of the Kids Choice Awards 2017 extended TV spot, which was one minute long. This extended trailer, or rather trailer number two, is two minutes and 20 seconds long. Therefore, they added 80 seconds of brand new footage. Now, I've already seen it. It blew my mind. I did a reaction video for it. It's the previous video. And then I also watched it in IMAX because I went to watch Beauty and the Beast in IMAX 3D. It wasn't in 3D as in like the trailer wasn't in 3D but it was at least presented in IMAX and it was huge. So now here I am and I'm gonna do a shot for shot analysis of this brand new trailer. Now I'm not gonna talk about any of the shots that I've already seen before. Let's just go straight to the brand new shots. All right so it starts off with this footage of these kids getting off the school bus. And it says Oak Park there on the um, on the mirror. So I guess that's the uh, that's the name of the school she goes to. I guess now the kids getting off the school bus appear to be her classmates because she says she went to a normal school. And I originally thought, for some weird reason, I read that she's an orphan. These kids are orphans. They go to an orphanage school, and so she's hanging out with other orphans. But Maybe they still are, but at least we know that these are her classmates. So they go to school together. Let's move on to the next shot here. Oh, here's her with Squeaks. So she says she lived a normal life. And it looks like uh, she's hanging out in a junkyard. And um, Squeaks is her loyal best friend. Oh, she says some kids used to tease me. And this is funny. Squeaks rolling along. And then he throws his own handlebar on the floor. And... <laughs> It appears that he needs some fixing. And I'm starting to really like Squeaks as a character based on these shots here. <laughs> the skinny, the skinny nerdy kid uh, says, wow, who is he? As far as I'm concerned, he's my boyfriend. How long has that been going on for? <laughs> and I love the look that Izzy gives to him. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to like this skinny nerdy kid the most. I don't know why. The, the way he just... Um, uh, you know, he, he says his lines of dialogue. It just feels very, very natural. So, like I said before, I'm beginning to really like these kids. Especially him. And that little smile that he does is, is just really funny. Oh yeah, I just want to go back to the shot once again. We've already seen this. But it's such a cool shot. And it's typical Michael Bay fashion. He loves to flip cars while people are running away. And uh, there you get a better shot of Barricade in the background. A uh, Bumblebee walking across crosshairs with his arms crossed saying just don't expect any bedtime stories and Izzy just watching them <clears throat> and this appears to be the one of the um I guess introductions to uh to from Izzy to um uh to the Autobots I feel like this is the like an introductory scene where she's meeting the Autobots for the first time. And I, by Autobots, I'm meeting the main Autobot ca cast. Now, Autobot, I mean, sorry, Bumblebee doesn't appear to be that sensitive to Izzy's character because he's just walking right past her. As in, almost like, um, like I don't care about you. I don't know who you are, right? I have another... Uh, guardian or something and crosshairs is being his his um his uh, usual insensitive self saying well don't expect any bedtime stories so that really conveys a lot about the personality okay here we go we get another closer shot or rather a clearer shot of megatron holding um squeaks and i never noticed this before but look, look at that red on his uh on his face Notice it's only on one side. It's not symmetrical. It's not like it's not um, both sides. It's just that one side. And I'm wondering if it represents something. I, I'm not sure what it could represent. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of like like um, uh, theories I could put out there, just because I, I really don't have any idea at the moment. But uh, I, it is definitely something very very interesting. It might not even mean anything at all. Maybe I mean remember uh, Starscream's alien tattoos like what did that mean it didn't mean anything at all so um i'm not going to put too much thought into that okay here we go check this out now that we have the trailer in hd you can get a way closer look of 
the Decepticons. There are obviously uh, five of them, Megatron being one of them. I believe that's Onslaught on the right. And uh, now we have a guy on the roof, another one, uh, like hanging along these telephone poles and also another one that's got the, the, the you know, the iris, the single iris uh, on the front, j I mean, on the front of his face, just like, uh, um, uh, uh, who is that? Galvatron? No, not Galvatron. Shockwave, Shockwave. And these are the new Decepticons. And I just want to see if I can get a closer look at them. Let me, let me just play that one more time. Let's see what I can see. Oh, wow. Okay, um... I don't think any of these are barricade. I was thinking like that the one on the top on the on the roof could be barricade or maybe the one hanging around the telephone poles could be barricade, but I don't think any single one of these are barricade actually. So uh uh I don't know where he's at, but turns out he's going to show up later on in his vehicle form when things start blowing up. Oh, look at this shot of Megatron. Look at that. Like this is a beautiful shot the way he turns his head like, there's so much emotion going on here. Look at his eyes. They're so vicious looking. Look at those sharp teeth. Like, this is the Megatron I remember. Not that KSI Galvatron nonsense, okay? I mean, sure, it had Frank Welker voicing it, but this feels more like Megatron. It's just so fitting. Boom! Mark Wahlberg fires a blast. Now, I'm not exactly sure if, if Mark Wahlberg firing the blast is actually uh, causing that actual explosion. I don't think so because it appears that Mark Wahlberg firing the gun, the Cybertronian gun, or the gun that he made, is is a different scene, like a different setting. It looks like the um, the Ch Detroit Pla Packard plant. This explosion appears to be a completely different location, so we're gonna rule that out. So this is these bombs were set off by that detonator that we see in the extended TV spot. I don't know who's blown up here, but we get a better shot of of this character right here. Um, and I'm not sure who it could be. Definitely a new Decepticon though. And this is where Mark Wahlberg, or rather Cade, rescues Izzy. So he says, you know, you're not going anywhere with me. And it turns out that uh, Cade starts noticing that Izzy is a bit of a troublemaker. Because she's like totally like, I'm not afraid of you running into danger. So he's having second thoughts about bringing her with him to these dangerous situations. Now this shot is ridiculous. This is the shot where Optimus Prime is is um in a scene where these these things are beating him up. Is that Megatron watching in the background? Let me just play that again. I, I can't really tell, but it looks like that it could be Megatron watching in the background, but he's going up against several bad guys. Let me let me count it up. Let me count that up and see how many of them are there. One, two, Three, four, five. Could these be the Infernicons? They could be the Infernicons, but I I always thought that the Infernicons were much bigger because they have to form something huger, and that's Infernicus. So, I mean, considering there's five of them, and they look very barbaric-like, and like, you know, like, uh, very, very, um, uh, like, not really robot-like, like, creature-like, beast-like, these could be the Infernicons. I mean, there's five of them. I see one of them looks like he's carrying like a Morningstar mace. So it looks like really, really medieval looking type of like Cybertronians. But I have a feeling, and this is just speculation only, this could be like a trial. This could be like the trials of Optimus Prime. Like this is a task he has to do. And that is he has to fight these guys as part of some kind of like test or something. I don't know. It just feels like that. Two completely different scenes. I want to stay and I want to fight them. And then, uh, this, you, you, you know, you're, you're a bit of a badass, J-Lo, right? And then this scene of her smiling and looking away, like, that's a completely different scene because there were tears on her face and then she's smiling away. So, I don't know, that didn't, that wasn't edited very well. <laughs> now, this is an interesting scene. This is where we see Bumblebee lying down. Kate is, uh... Kate is, um, seems to be helping him. She just went, done. And after that, we still hear those noises that Bumblebee makes. Maybe it takes a little bit of time for, um, for his voice to come back. But I'm wondering, like, why did they decide to show this one scene? It's a very specific scene. 
Um, and it's something that a lot of the fans have been waiting for, and that's for Bumblebee to get his voice back. If you show us this scene and Bumblebee doesn't get his voice back, that's a little bit of a cop-out. That's kind of unfair to the fans, you know what I'm saying? This scene is sub suggesting to the fans that he gets his voice back, which is something we've been wanting for a while. So, I hope they, get, they give him his voice back because you cannot show us this scene and not give him his voice back. You're coming with me or what? Now that's a pretty big deal. That's a sign of approval. Cade is has been um Cade has been um disapproving the idea of Izzy coming along because she's a young girl and then she wants to he wants to protect her just like he protected his daughter. But it turns out that you know she's proved him she's proved herself and because of that he says you coming along or what? So she's coming along for the ride. Oh, there's Hound and uh, Miko. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Bulkhead and Izzy. Oh, look at this cool shot, man. So we got soldiers hiding behind these Cybertronian hexagons. And um, and Hound is blasting away. So I'm wondering what is coming at them. Like, you got the soldiers just like, like you know, hiding behind cover and ready to blast. And Hound is providing, like, like heavy fire support. So I wonder what is coming at them. If they're pointing at guns in all directions, there must be a lot of them. What could those be? That's lockdown ship. That's freaking lockdown ship. <laughs> I didn't even total I didn't even pick up on that the first time I watched it. That's lockdown ship. Lockdown ship still seems to be playing a part in the film. This changes everything. This completely changes everything because like like, there is, like, stuff in Lockdown Ship. You guys know what's in there. The Knight's Temenos is inside Lockdown Ship. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, what is going on here, but, um, like, this opens up a lot of new theories. Knight's Temenos is in there. There could be more Knights in there, as in Dinobots. Or, like, Dinobot-type characters. Anything could be in the Lockdown Ship, but it seems like it's being piloted or running away from these Ospreys. So this makes for an aerial chase sequence. And this is in the fields of uh, somewhere in the UK, maybe London. I mean, uh, sorry, Scotland. Whoa. Okay, some of the parts of, let's call it Cybertron, bits of Cybertron are falling down to Earth. And because it's falling down to Earth, that allows it to become part of Earth. And that's why... Um, um, the land is made up of those hexagonal shapes and that's why the, the soldiers can hide behind them. We got, so we got parts of Cybertron making its way to Earth. Um, there appears to be a turret. There appears to be a turret that they're running towards in this grand shot. Remember the shot? We saw this in the, the first teaser. The first time there's a teaser, I mean the first time we saw this shot, it didn't have a force field. There's like this force field, which um, I'm not sure why it would be there because the explosions are going off. So that means the force field is actually containing all the damage. So I don't know why any anything like that should happen, but there's got to be an explanation for it. I mean, maybe these guys are the bad guys and, you know, whatever blew them up doesn't want the explosion to go outside of that. So we are, we, we appear to be inside the Knight's Temenos. Uh, this is a more clear shot. Yeah, uh, I, I believe her name is Vivian and, uh, Cade. Um, like, once again, they're in this cavern. There's knights in there. We've already seen this shot. Oh, uh, there's a, there's a chase scene in the, uh, the Detroit Packard plant. It looks like the Detroit Packard plant between Barricade and somebody else. Pretty sure it's Bumblebee. And look at all these TIE fighters. Uh, let's see. I'm, let me try to figure out where the heck this is. I can't really tell just because, uh... Like, I don't know what location this is. Um, it looks like they're trucks here. Like, they're carried by a truck. Look, this is a truck, and they're coming off of this trailer. Uh, this could be TRF technology. These TIE Fighters could be TRF technologies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they are. They could be, like, hunting down, uh, hunting down Autobots or something like that. Here's Izzy, um, Cade, and uh, Gerard Carmichael. They're in a scene together. Uh, not sure what is going on, but um, they seem to be wearing the same wardrobe that they were wearing uh, right before that big explosion that took out the five Decepticons. It looks like one of those things, those those flying things, flew right at Cade. Yeah, it looks like one of those flying things, I think it's one of those flying things, flew right at Cade, knocking him out of the, uh, 
knocking him out of the window of the bel the building. Yeah, some kind of flying thing flew right at him. But if you look here, um, I think we're getting our very first shot of Mohawk. So I'm going to assume that Hooligan's the Volkswagen van and Mohawk is the motorcycle because I always believe that Mohawk is a human-sized Decepticon. And if you look closely right here, uh, Gerard Carmichael's right there. Mark Wahlberg's falling through this glass. And I think that's actually Mohawk. It could be Mohawk. Mohawk, like I said before, is the um, the motorcycle Decepticon. The Confederate 61, I believe. And um, if you watch this Facebook Live video, which Michael Bay posted, it showed that Gerard Carmichael and, and Mark Wahlberg were in a scene together where they were... Uh, they appeared to be face-to-face uh, um, -face with a human-sized Decepticon because, you know, in the behind-the-scenes footage, you can't see what he's who he's talking to. He's talking to somebody, but it's not there. It's going to be filled in with uh, visual effects. So it could be Mohawk, and that could be our first look at him. He's falling out of this building, and somebody's got to save him. Um, so it looks like Izzy is part of one of the main battle sequences in this film because you see um Cade um trying to help Izzy like out of somewhere so uh he is helping her get away I actually thought that Izzy was only going to appear in the um like just the the American parts of the the film but it looks like there's more to it than that now this is pretty crazy because from what I gather here the Cybertronian uh, scenes, a uh, Cybertronian parts of the, uh, like the planet fall onto the earth and then it's rising back up again. Or the Ospreys landed on the floating Cybertronian land pieces. And now these, these, uh, Air Force guys got to, uh, jump off and that's not Tyrese Gibson. Okay. <laughs> so they got to jump off and get back to earth. So this is a pretty crazy scene and we've seen everything else here. Except for that final scene where Dino, uh, where Grimlock spits out a little bit more stuff. There's, yeah, more stuff coming out. Come on, man, be careful! So, that type of dialogue that Cade says to Grimlock shows that Cade has some sort of, not, I wouldn't say necessarily um, control over Grimlock, but there's a bit of a relationship. There's an understanding between Cade and Grimlock for some reason. And I guess because the of the the events of Age of Extinction that that uh, I created a little bit of uh, that that relationship, they've both s contributed to save the world from from invasion for or from like KSI domination. Uh, so I guess there's that understanding there there that they helped each other. But how Grimlock gets to America, I wonder if they'll even explain that. Now producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura mentioned that Grimlock is going to provide a little bit of comic relief relief because. He's going to kind of be like a like a like a dog that is, you know, trying to figure himself out. But anyways, wow. That was pretty crazy. I think that was pretty awesome. But I'll tell you something. Now there there's something that uh that's interesting that I'm going to mention. When I watched this for the first time, it was awesome. Like it was pretty awesome. Like I was like, "Whoa," right? But when I watched it in IMAX, it didn't really do much for me. Now the re main reason why is because when you watch a movie trailer on a giant giant screen with big sound it's supposed to be like a cinematic experience like it's supposed to tell a story now the reason why I got excited when I watch uh, this trailer on a small screen is because I'm watching it for the first time I'm seeing a lot of new scenes and even though it plays out like a featurette it's still exciting to me because I'm watching it for the first time now when I'm watching it in IMAX it doesn't really work as a trailer just because there's that narration from Izzy and when she's narrating and and it cuts from the movie scenes to her and back to the movie scenes and back to her the 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 way the um the trailer feels like is that it's it's very very disjointed it, it doesn't really have that same cinematic feel and the other trailers that I watched that came before Beauty and the Beast, like Wonder Woman and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, I forgot what else I saw, uh, but um, they were great to watch. They were, were really, really awesome to watch. But when I watched Transformers Last Night trailer 2, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. It didn't have that storytelling 
feel to it. It didn't tell a story. It didn't have a beginning, middle, and an end like the original first teaser. Um, I feel that, to be completely honest, this trailer was poorly edited. I'm going to be completely honest here. It was poorly edited. This whole deal about this, this um, you know, um, Izzy doing the narration and, you know, like, I was teased, uh, but I fight like a girl and live the normal life and all that stuff, it doesn't work. Like, it works here just because I'm seeing it for the first time, but, like, it doesn't work on the big screen. It doesn't have that... St that cinematic feel it doesn't feel like it's telling a story at all all i get is just a bunch of random scenes and those are my thoughts about it uh this is a poorly edited trailer i'm gonna be completely straight up with you but it still got me excited anyways <laughs> that's all i gotta say in this episode um this opens up a lot of new doors the whole the things that got me very very um intrigued was was lockdown ship still being there and what they're going to find there. And what purpose he serves to the story. And of course Optimus Prime uh, being beat by a couple of weird like monster cons or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so uh, and it looks like Barricade is going to finally have his time to shine. Because he appears to be on his own like kind of acting separately from the Decepticons. Uh, if you guys have any theories about that, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to read about them. Anyways, before I go, I want to give a big shout out to Mark Creation Studios. If you enjoy stop motion um, uh, Transformers uh, short films, stop motion animations, Transformers short films, check out his channel, Mark Creation Studios. I'm going to leave you link, the link on the description box below. He's got a new short film coming up. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I actually did a, a little bit of a voiceover work for him. So make sure you subscribe to his channel because you'll be able to see my voiceover work. <laughs> and I'm, I will be voicing Evac. So why don't you head over there. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but you can ask him. Uh, his channel has a lot of stop motion, Transformers, animation, short films, and uh, you will enjoy it. Or I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. It's been really, really busy with all this new marketing and toy leaks, all these brand new images. So stay tuned for a lot more new videos because we got a lot to talk about. I'm not even done talking about the trailer. I'm going to talk about specific scenes in future episodes and there's going to be more speculation. And make sure you stay tuned for that. Anyways, as always, if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, Raging Nation. My name is Oxy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Oh! I think you're a badass, huh? Is this okay to be a kid, little J-Lo? Funny that 